if we find fullness of life in these three things, peace, joy, and love, when we're not happy and when we aren't feeling fulfilled in life, it's because, one, we have a false idea on what love is, two, misplaced hope in perishing things that only bring temporary joy, and three, we're undermining peace. The real focus and purpose of this challenge is to help you realize that your fullness of life is determined by what the Lord gives you, and that can neither be given nor taken away by this world. JC gang, how are y'all? What y'all been on? Like, has life been lifing? Has it been cool? Because I know it's been lifing for me, but that is a totally different video. My name is Quincy Simone. Um, we don't do introductions over here, for real, other than me just telling you your, my name. But I can't really tell you of what this channel will give. Because it's just like, it's it's my life. It's the things that I learn. It's the things that I want to share with y'all, whether it's a vlog, whether it's me sitting here, you know, keeping it a hundred and just like telling y'all things that I'm going through on my spiritual journey and hoping to enlighten y'all on the things that you will go through as well it just it is what it is and it's everything all in one that's all I can say and if you feel like we click we, you feel like I'm a vibe then all the better amen <laughs> so after you've gotten your drink your snacks a pen and some highlighters and some paper I'm gonna need you to plant your butt somewhere and I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to reflect on this question do you actually love yourself your strengths, your weaknesses, the things that you like, you dislike, the things that you feel like you could improve on, the things that you feel like that you lack. Do you personally love yourself and who you are and okay with who you are? Or are you merely just trying to base your self-love off of accolades, accomplishments, material possessions, and your titles? The things that you say that you are in this world. A singer. I'm a content creator. I'm... I'm a realtor, you know, you know, different titles that we have and positions that we have in this world. And you probably just like, whew, we starting out like this. So this whole challenge is stemmed off of a plan that I found in the YouVersion app. Um, it's like a self-love plan and finding like your identity in Christ before you find it within the things of this world. The big whole theme is self-love, but like the real focus and purpose of this challenge is to help you realize that your fullness of life is determined by what the Lord gives you. And that can neither be given nor taken away by this world. Before we get into the challenge though, I'm gonna need you to say this affirmation with me. My life is full. Peace, joy, and love are mine. Now this came from, um, because the plan mentioned Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and faith so you overflow in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So obviously it mentions joy and peace, but then I was realizing what is another gift that like God always talks about and like the huge purpose of life. Well, one of the like the only commandments that he really gives us is one to put our um, our hope and faith into Jesus Christ and believe that he rose from the dead and that he oversees all and that he died for our sins and all that. But two is also to love others, love others as we love ourselves. There's two two things that I think he means in that. Yes, love others. But he's saying that like in order to love others, you have to love others like you would love yourself. So one, you have to love yourself. So two, you can love others. Love others like you love yourself. So the fullness of life is love, joy, and peace. And you can find all of that within Christ. If we find fullness of life in these three things, peace, joy, and love, when we're not happy and when we aren't feeling fulfilled in life, it's because... One, we have a false idea on what love is. Two, misplaced hope in perishing things that only bring temporary joy. And three, we're undermining peace. Are any of these three reasons why you don't feel happy in your life? Or you don't feel fulfilled? Or you just feel sad? You feel something is empty? You know, you just feel like some type of void. Are any of these three reasons why you might not be happy? Now for me, at one point, it was, it was all three of those, okay? And it's still kind of is like I'm learning what love is I'm learning to not misplace my hope and trust into um perishing things that only bring temporary joy like accomplishments you know like what I am in life and how good I'm doing it and three just like undermining what true peace is my fault y'all had to reposition because my camera just told me that it's hot and it, it was too it was too much going on in the sun so the first part of the challenge write down the reason you aren't happy so like I said is it false ideas on love are you misplacing your hope and perishing things in this world that only brings temporary joy or are you undermining what peace really is so write down whatever that is so for me I'm honestly gonna write down 
it's really all three for me. <laughs> you know, like if you being for real with yourself, at least at least for me. And feel free to eat during this time. Like we doing this together, okay? Now you'll want to explain kind of to yourself of like the extent of each one. So false ideas of love. So for me, I kept hopping into relationships because I thought that this person loved me. I thought they were showing me love. I thought, oh my God, this is what really love is. Oh my God, I'm about to get married. You know, just, I was, I had a false idea of what love really was. And so I was, you know, I was in toxic relationships. I was in situationships, you know, I was in sneaky links and all that. Um, and now it's more so like, yes, that was part of it. And I'm getting out of that. And it's more so just now, I don't know what love is because I'm not defining it the way that the Lord defines it. So I just finished mine. Did y'all finish yours? <laughs> if y'all feel comfortable, y'all could kind of put down some of um, your specific reasons down in the comments. If you feel comfortable, you don't have to. Like I said, I'm a little open, so... I share with y'all some of the things that I put down. And now that we know how we determine what love is, what joy is, and peace is, we can match this with what God really says each of these things are and how to accomplish them. Be patient with yourself. Be kind with yourself. Don't, you know, don't be too prideful and don't be too boastful. But at the same time, know, you are, know who you are, know whose you are. Be selfless. Not be easily angered with yourself. Don't be irritable. Yes, when you do go and love people, make sure that you are patient with them, you are kind with them, that you are sympathetic with them generous with them but also at the same time know that those same actions should be shown to you it should be recipro reciprocated to you and that's what love is but when I go back to my page when I break it down because I had a false idea of love I was always trying to be in a relationship you know I didn't feel like I could give love to myself I thought that being by someone's side through any and everything that they put you through was love also I thought as silly as it sounds that you know love is situationships and in sneaky links and you may just be like you thought but like for real sometimes we don't know what love is so we think that like oh like this person gives me attention at least at this time and at this time and they want me to come over here they they love me they want me and attention doesn't mean value it, you know somebody wanting you is different from someone valuing you i stayed in toxic relationships that i knew i should have long put to rest you know I just stayed in toxic environments because I didn't know what love was now that I know what love is based off of what God says it is and who he is I can write that down now and it'd be better if you put them just like um like right next to each other so you can literally see this is what it is not this is what it is so I'm gonna do that right now so do you kind of get like what we're doing here so we're literally just it seems so simple but when you break it down like this it helps you to literally see how you determine what love is how you determine what joy is and what the Lord says and how you can match it with that so you can put down those things and actually look and see the world through the lens of what um, God says through his word for example now that I know that love is patient love is kind love is all these things I know that I can literally give these things to myself and more importantly I already know that the one who created this whole world that the nature the green grass us humans you know humanity I know that I have love for him and that's like the greatest type of love there is like there is no other love on this earth that can compare to the love that the Lord has for us so that now that I know that I can give it to myself and most importantly I have an abundance of love from the Lord I don't need to always be in a relationship and two because I know what love is now, I don't need to stay in toxic relationships. I know that someone being easily angered with me is not love. I know that someone that is not patient with me is not love. I know someone that is not necessarily selfish, that is not selfless in some ways, it is not love. And another thing is to realize that now that we know, like when it says that love is patient, kind, you know, selfless and everything, like I said, there is no, there's no greater love than the love that God can give. His love is perfect, but you have to also realize that we are humans at the end of the day. We make mistakes. We are going to continue to make mistakes and we are just naturally in this fleshly sinful body and we're going to do things that make us selfish. We're going to do things that, that show that we are easily angered in all these things. It is not an end all be all when it comes to these things. Like you can look for these things into a person and, and can determine it off of that, but just know the only person that can give you perfect love is the Lord. So just keep that in mind. Now we have joy. Um, and I found a couple scriptures that, um, helped me like defining joy sorry i had to move out the sun but nehemia sorry if i'm pronouncing that wrong but nehemia 8 10 
um, for the joy of the Lord is your strength simply as it says when you think about the Lord and you think about everything that he's done for you it's so hard to not just feel joy you know and like that joy like when you're in difficult times hard times and everything through trials and tribulations that is your strength I just think about like how he defeated this world and he endured the cross so that we do not be so we don't have to be discouraged so that we don't give up that's hebrews 12 3 but that's also a good one of just like how to remind yourself when you just think of everything that he's done for us it's hard like it's hard to not just like be like dang okay this ain't that bad like considering what he gave up for me so that i can live so i can continue to live and you have to realize too what one thing that puts me in awe of like how great he is is just the fact that like he died on the cross for the chance of us remembering who he was glorifying him obeying him obeying his commandments and all of this you know it was just for the chance of us you know thanking him of us like glorifying him and it helps to familiarize yourself with the things that he's done for us so that way you can count those blessings in your head of what he did so um find joy in the lord and that will be your strength through all things Another one that's similar to um, Nehemiah 8.10, but words it, you know, kind of in a different way. James 1, verses 2 to 3. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces per produces perseverance. Perseverance. Sorry, y'all. I'm talking too fast. So I took this as to mean that, like, you can find joy because your faith is growing. And I know that's a weird way of saying it. It kind of takes the focus away from trials and tribulations. But it says, consider it pure joy. And then it says, in between commas, of your trials and tribulations. But because of those trials and tribulations, you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Take joy in the fact that you are growing in this world. That you are able to endure through all opposition in this world that it throws at you because... Of your faith because your faith is going to trump everything else because you believe in the one person that rules over all of this and because you believe in that person you believe that everything's gonna be all right that it has to work out anyways so therefore I don't need to to misplace my joy in things like my job position and my title I don't need to worry about video views I don't need to worry about the kind of car that I drive or my accomplishments because I know that my faith trumps over all of that that's because I know the one that I put my faith into, which produces my joy, is the person that oversees all of this. So, at the end of the day, these things don't even matter. My bad, y'all. We had to take it to the crib because my camera was dying. But the next one is peace. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 9. And this is basically just saying to fix your thoughts on what's true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable. Y'all, are y'all familiar with that? Um... Um, that whole scripture so basically Philippians 4 just talks about how you can be you know content in any situation no matter what you go through similar to joy hand in hand with joy I feel like peace and joy kind of go hand in hand you know if you have joy then you have peace and um, I think that was like the whole point of what he meant in Romans 15 13 so Philippians 4 well it starts at Philippians 4 4 be glad in the Lord always. Again, I say, be glad. Let your gentleness show and your treatment of all people. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all your requests to God and your prayers and petitions along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. From now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent and if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things. All that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. Practice these things. Whatever you learned, received, heard, or saw in us, the God of peace will be with you. Oh, God is so good. And then, if you scroll down... Philippians 4 19 my God will meet your every need out of his riches and the glory that is found in Christ Jesus so sometimes we think for example sometimes we think peace is financial freedom you know being so wealthy that we just have our freedom that we could just do whatever we want but then again we're putting our hope in having some money so then so that we can have some type of freedom that is peace where we don't have to work a nine to five or we ha don't have to go to somebody's office and work eight to nine hours and then come home and only have three to four hours for ourselves. we think sometimes that that is peace or sometimes we think this is me honestly the first one is me too though but we also think that we need to go on a vacation every other month we think that that is peace and although yes you do feel a sense of peace i don't know another word to put that i would say happy but i don't know you you just got to be careful there's a fine line there but at the same time 
that's fleeting as well you still have to return back to reality and if you're if, if you were forever looking to the next vacation that is not peace you're gonna make yourself broke and then you're gonna be mad because then again it roots back to to money and, and money is the root of all evil and paul kind of even like hints at the fact that like peace isn't um kind of like the things that i mentioned peace isn't always just stillness peace isn't always calmness peace isn't always quietness but he says verse 11 for i have learned how to be content in any circumstance i know the experience of being in need and having more than enough i have learned the secret to being content in any and every circumstance whether full or hungry or whether having plenty or being poor it doesn't matter the circumstance it doesn't matter if it's chaotic in your life it doesn't matter if it's noisy in your life it doesn't matter if you are alone it doesn't matter if you are in front of water it doesn't matter if you are sitting in stillness and just meditating but you know that you have peace because the peace of God, when you look to him, transcends all understanding. So now, you can write down what real peace is. That's why I say to put them side by side. Because when I'm putting mine side by side and I see what I thought what peace was and what real peace is according to God, it's so night and day. That is the challenge. And I just want y'all to know that like there are so many other scriptures about love, joy, and peace in these three gifts. Um, I just I just named a couple, but there are so many more. And please go in depth. Please keep searching and please keep defining what they mean according to the Lord's word. So we make sure that nobody is confused. Again, the whole point of it all is just to realize that your fullness of life is found in love, joy, and peace. And that's surrounded around Christ. When we place love, joy, and peace into like the things of this world, we realize that we aren't happy. So... When it comes to love, we have false ideas on love. When it comes to joy, we misplace hope in perishing things that only bring temporary joy. And with peace, we undermine what that really means and what that looks like throughout our life. So for love and your false idea of love, you'll just want to explain what that false idea was. What, how did it affect like your life? Like what did you do because of that false idea? What did you put it up with? Joy, um, your misplaced hope and perishing things that brought temporary joy. Explain what those things were. For peace, you'll just explain how you undermine peace. Like what did you think peace was? And as you're reflecting, you'll see that like, dang. <laughs> And it's just like, it's good though, because you are becoming more aware of it. And like I said, putting it on paper, it just makes it so much more real. And by doing this, we take back by what the world is always trying to take from us. And like I said, you can just find fullness of life forever with inside of you by knowing what these, by knowing what love, joy, and peace truly are, because they are gifts from the Lord. And you got to know that they are only from him. And you got to check yourself of like what you're putting your joy into, what you think peace is, what you think love is so that you can correctly receive it and so you can correctly show it to others but thank you guys so much for tuning in please let me know if i should do more challenges like these i have some more on my um social media on tiktok and instagram so feel free to go over there to see a couple more but let me know if y'all like these i'll probably do them like once a week along with some other videos hoping to stay consistent hoping to see y'all more often okay mm -hmm.